Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by Scotia Eye Trade. Direct invest with Scotia Eye Trade. Money doesn't just happen, make it happen. The Ontario government said in its fiscal update that it had recovered almost a quarter billion dollars, $225 million in revenue, by fighting the underground economy over the past year. But our guest says Ontario needs to do much more to clamp down on the lucrative illegal cigarette trade in the province, which he says costs the government $1 billion a year in lost tax revenue. So let's take a closer look at this problem of contraband cigarettes in Ontario. We're joined by Gary Grant, ex-Toronto police officer, now spokesperson for the National Coalition Against Contraband Tobacco. It's great to see you. Good morning. So give us an idea of the scale of this problem. What are we talking? We're talking about cigarettes that are made and then no tax is paid on them, basically. Well, yeah, we're talking about cigarettes that are made without complying with any of the regulations in Canada to dealing with this, the manufacturing, distribution and sale of cigarettes. So basically, you know, not legally made. And we're talking about cigarettes that haven't paid uh, uh, provincial excise in some cases and we're talking unfortunately about cigarettes that haven't complied with any regulations because the RCMP has indicated that there's about 50 illegal cigarettes in Canada that f factories. Illegal, illegal cigarette factories in Canada that are churning out as many as 10,000 a minute and then they're just being distributed across the provinces and, and sold uh, at very cheap prices. Um, a lot of the illegal cigarettes in Ontario come from Aboriginal communities. Most of the cigarettes that are manufactured are, do end up being manufactured in Aboriginal communities, whether it's at Cornwall or whether it's at uh, Six Nations. And uh, unfortunately, now, now they have a federal license to manufacture cigarettes and uh, to be sold and consumed on First Nations land. The problem happens when people come in and start taking large quantities of them and when they're sold to people in large quantities without paying the provincial taxes. That becomes uh, an offense. But it's become so lucrative to the criminal gangs that have become involved that there's 50, 5 zero illegal plants that have opened up on, on, in, in those locations and they don't comply with any regulations. They have no agreements with any level of government and they're just churning out as many as 10,000 cigarettes a minute and brought into the community and it's just pure illegal profit. Is this happening in other provinces, this phenomenon of Aboriginal communities making or the cigarettes being made on their land? Most of the cigarettes are manufactured in Ontario and Quebec and they have been, but uh, we have seen uh, the criminal, criminals making inroads. We've, there's have been large seizures uh, in the Maritimes recently and we've seen some attempts uh, out west. Uh, we're trying to stop that from getting a foothold like is it in is in Ontario. Mm -hmm. Ontario's got the worst problem in Canada. Uh, research has shown over the last couple of years that about one in three cigarettes purchased in, in Ontario I mean, are contraband. So that really sounds like millions of people are involved in an illegal trade and that's not really a socially good thing. It's not a socially good thing. In fact, the RCMP has <coughs> stated flat out that it's an organized crime activity. Uh, the people that are distributing this across the, the provinces and across uh, our neighborhoods are one of 175 organized crime gangs that the RCMP have identified. And about 70% of those gangs also distribute and sell weapons, drugs. So anytime organized crime is your, in your community, Andy, that's a bad thing. And they target kids. They'll sell you, uh, your 12-year-old your son or daughter a baggie of 200 cigarettes for the cost of a movie ticket, hmm. undermining the government's you know, legislation to stop teen smoking. And it's just not good to have ordinary members, law-abiding members of the public otherwise involved with organized crime in any way. It, it's, no. it never good can come of it. And most of the excuses you always hear is, well, with the cigarettes, we're just cheating the tax man. But you're not cheating the tax man, are you? If you're cheating at, on your taxes, you're cheating me, you're cheating you, you're cheating the taxpayer of legitimate programs the government should be running instead of filling the pockets of criminals. And the, the poor old corner stores is pretty tough on the legitimate corner stores. The corner stores have been impacted very severely. They're hard working people they work on small profit margins they take the full weight of the law coming down on them if they inadvertently sell to a young person and they see the criminals selling them with impunity and undercutting their prices and they've uh, been impacted severely 
What about Quebec uh, has been acting on this? Have they made any progress? Quebec has made great progress. A few years ago, they were in the same boat as Ontario because the uh, area around Cornwall, Montreal, was the epicenter of the contraband trade. And in, in, in Quebec, they decided to take the bull by the horn and they passed legislation that allowed every municipal police officer, every provincial police officer in the province to tackle contraband tobacco in a complete way, not just stopping it and turning it over to revenue officers or to the Mounties, but bringing it right through court and seeking a conviction. And they also put an agency together called Access to Back, which means that the fine money that comes in from any convictions goes back to the municipalities to continue to fight. So it's self-funding enforcement. And they've halved it. They've halved their contraband rate. It's fascinating stuff because I know it's a global problem, this trade in contraband cigarettes. It is a global problem. I mean, it's obviously very lucrative to criminals. It's uh, low risk and high reward. And uh, But we are the worst because even globally, it's usually about only about one in 10 people are smoking contraband. <clears throat> one in three was a real shocker that we found in the last couple of years in Ontario. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty high number. Gary, thanks very much indeed. Fascinating oh, my pleasure. story. Gary Grant has been our guest. He's an ex, <clears throat> excuse me, ex Toronto police officer, now spokesperson for the National Coalition Against Contraband Tobacco. <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't been smoking cigarettes. Up next, we're going to hear more about a junior company that's partnering with some big players in Chile. ski vacation with the family, enjoying a well-deserved soak in the hillside hot tub, after your direct flight during March break, doing it all on points. Fly on any airline, any flight, any time. Avioners can do that. Start avioning today and get 15,000 welcome points. Alarm Force presents the Alarm Care System. Alarm Care is an emergency response system that allows anyone wishing to live independently with direct access to an alarm care operator at just a push of a button. And now with fall detection, built-in sensors will detect a fall and automatically call for help. With Alarm Care, get installation and lifetime warranty all at no charge with no annual contract. Brought to you by Alarm Force, the best choice for emergency response. Call 1-800-267-2001 or visit myalarmcare.com and care for the ones you love with Alarm Care. Exhilaration. Experience it for yourself. Quest Trade IQ. Trading transformed. Visit questtrade.com today. back to the second half hour of commodities here's a quick look at the guests we have coming up in this half hour in just a moment we'll talk to will randall he is the ceo of arena minerals it's a prospect generator in chile it's been signing deals or inking deals with b2 gold and tech resources uh, ross Beatty is a big shareholder and we're going to ask will randall in this current well nuclear winter for junior mining stocks has he found a way of keeping investors interested and then we're going to talk to Chris Lowen, VP of Operations at the National Energy Board. They are going public with some of the regulatory data on pipelines. Why are they doing this? Will it make a big difference? We'll hear from the NEB. It's all coming up, but first, let's very quickly check in on the commodity markets. Oil under pressure, Mr. Putin of Russia um, indicating he is going to go on cooperating with other Western powers in attacking the Islamic State, and also it 
appears that tension is easing between Russia and Turkey after the shooting down of that Russian fighter jet near the Syrian border earlier this week. Let's check in on gold. Of course, Will Randall of Arena is not too happy to see this, but gold dropping to its lowest in five years. U.S. dollar still riding high. Um, and copper hanging in, but of course, it's trading near multi-year lows. Meanwhile, the price.